if you want to spend money on something, okay, uh, show me what we're cutting. Like what, where are the priorities here, right? If, if $60 billion for Ukraine is a priority, what is a lesser priority that we are going to take that money out of? And if I was a member of Congress and, uh, you know, I, I would start from a place of no, I think on both these aid bills, but I would say, Hey, Speaker Johnson, if you can show me where the 60 billion is coming from for Ukraine and the, and the 30 billion for Israel, uh, then we can have a negotiation about that. We can decide where the priorities are because that's the thing that budgeting ultimately is, is a, is a ranking of priorities. And it's the thing that Congress doesn't ever do anymore because we just pass all these emergency spending bills and we don't, we don't try to balance them. Uh, so we should do that. But I think I would be a harder no uh, on, uh, it would be a harder uh, task to get me to vote for the, the Israel bill for exactly the point that you made earlier, Matt, which is that Israel's a wealthy country uh, and that I think there is a, there's some internal logic. I don't think I fully agree with it. In fact, I, I know I don't fully agree with it, but I think there is some internal logic to the idea that if we don't stop Russia and Ukraine, we're going to be fighting them in Romania or Poland or Estonia or something like that. Uh, again, I don't fully buy that argument, but I think there's at least some sort of justification there for continuing that and supporting that conflict there. Whereas Israel, okay, in the immediate aftermath of October 7th, I understand we have commitments there, but it's now been six months. They are engaged in what looks like a war of choice in Gaza, uh, a very destructive war there. Uh, and, and we're not going to be fighting Hamas in Poland or in Western Europe or in Kansas. Uh, that is that is a conflict that is entirely contained in that one geographical area. It is but a Columbia University. You know, still, yeah. It is yeah, a we'll conflict see. that Israel has to be responsible for. The uh, westernmost colony of Hamas, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> but so, I mean, I, I would be a start from a place of no on both those bills. Yeah. But I think it would be an easier uh, task to get to yes on Ukraine if you were making offsetting cuts. I uh, just to follow up on that real quick, I, I don't disagree in anything that would prioritize stuff where I what I think is important for the U.S. in the Middle East. And actually, this is also true in in Middle Europe as well. Um, you know, what are are we doing any kind of dip, diplomatic negotiations or whatever? The reason, you know, I, I believe that Hamas essentially did what it did partly at uh, Iran's urging or enthusiasm or aid or support. Iran is trying to destabilize the Middle East because once the U.S. actually left the region, you know, primarily, I mean, obviously we still have people there and things like that, uh, between the Abraham Accords and then, you know, a burgeoning relationship with Saudi Arabia, you could see how a bunch of Muslim Arab countries in the region were starting to say, you know what, Israel is is going to be here for a while. We can work with Israel. Israel is not trying to destroy us the way that Iran is and its proxies in Syria and Lebanon, et cetera. And I, you know, this is part of the biggest problem with foreign policy. And I can remember over a decade ago, I think, talking to a couple of people who were saying, you know, the, the biggest problem with the military budget is that all of it goes to bases overseas and to armed forces rather than diplomatic things. And that somewhere after World War II or during the Cold War, the State Department became a kind of subservient tool of the Defense Department. And we need to reverse that because what would be great is a Middle East where Israel and Saudi Arabia and UAE and a bunch of other countries have stabilized the region in a way that it does, you know, it, we don't have to be involved. I think we can, I, I, I tend not to think that Putin is expansionist in the way that I think a lot of uh, his staunchest critics do, but there is NATO there, which we're obviously implicated in, and Europe, uh, European countries, at least France and Poland, uh, particularly Poland, have really stepped up to contain that threat, I think, beyond the borders of Ukraine. 100% agree that diplomacy is the way to go. I'll just throw that in there. Totally agree with Nick on that. Like we, we need more diplomacy in both of these situations and in many other situations around the world. I think diplomacy in the Middle East is active. The question is, is it is it successful and is it and and like what can it accomplish? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the Biden administration's on the phone constantly having to do with hostage negotiations and and uh, other things besides and are holding levers over uh, Qatar and Egypt uh, with uh, foreign aid. Uh, Qatar, which thank God is a, uh, a major non-NATO ally. Um, I'm, I'm sure we're all glad yep. about that. And so we've got uh, one of our biggest military bases in Qatar, and I'm sure that the Hamas leadership who live there probably have PX privileges. Uh, let's go quickly to t go ahead, Kevin. Just th this is ultimately what all this money is about, right? If if we are, and this is why I remain even skeptical of the diplomatic relations approach, which is that 
people are hearing us out because we're writing them checks or selling them weapons. And that's just a fundamental underlying truth. They are, they're not hearing us out because of our moral gravity or our status as a you know, world power. Um, they are hearing us out because we are writing them checks. And um, that's a that's a contingent relationship that just gets increasingly expensive. And, you know, Joe Biden wants to say that this was, you know, uh, bill, billions for U.S. weapons manufacturers, which is already not a great argument, no. but um, it is in fact also just billions to buy uh, people answering our phone calls, and then we're not even accomplishing very much with those phone calls. That was a clip from the Reason Roundtable podcast. To watch more clips, go here. To watch the whole show, go here. And subscribe to the Reason Roundtable wherever you get your podcasts.